Welcome back. What's going on? Today we will be doing Masterminds. Masterminds is one of the recent and newest rooms released by, by Try Hack Me. In this room, we will be analyzing network traffic with a software called Brim. Normally, we would do network traffic analysis with Wireshark, but in this time, we will do network traffic forensic analysis. We will analyze PCAPs with a tool called Brim, right? So the first thing we would do just deploy the machine and make sure to launch the attack machine. Then click on show split view. Here you will see the attack box and you will see the uh, virtual machine. We will work only with the virtual machine for this scenario. All right, now the room has three tasks. In this video, we're gonna do the first one. All right, in upcoming videos, we will do task three and task four. Everyone has its own scenario. The first one, task two, infection one. In this task, we will open one of the B caps here and answer the questions. The point is to understand how to analyze network traffic and do forensic analysis for uh, the traffic. So basically, start by loading the infection one packet capture in Brim to investigate the compromise event for the first machine. All right, let's switch now to the, the machine, split, And now we are in. So now open the brim. Let's do this here. Okay. So we go to the B caps. We have infection one, two, and three. Make sure to open infection one for this task. So brim has opened. Click on file. It's kind of slow, but we're gonna have to wait for that. Let me close these. So add to the pool one file, or let me add this from the import. Let's import the file. Click on choose files. Desktop pcaps infection one open. Okay, we see some data now. All right, so now it worked properly. So as I said earlier, we have here the left, on the left pane, most the most used queries. They would help you in analyzing the data and save you time. On the left, right here, we see a kinda um, stacked view of what's happening. But we can actually and easily understand the fields here. For example, we have here the IPs. These are the source IP addresses. Here we have the numbers 137, 62. These are the source port, destination IP on this line, and we have the destination port. On the, the following on that, we have the protocol. Here we have UDP, and then exactly what is the communication protocol, DNS. Here we have HTTP, and then we get details about the traffic. For example, on this line, the IP address, 192.6875.249 initiated um, a GET request to this domain name. The page is wb content slash uh, whatever. And then we have what happened after the user initiated the request. We can see they received 404 not found, 404 not found. And also we can see the type of content. It's text slash HTML. So the Interface is kind of stacked. Yes, you cannot see uh, the field names, but you can actually try to decode what's happening by just looking at the order of the data here. IP port, IP port, protocol, and then you have the domain name. So you can, you can, you can just make sense of it. And here you can see the type of protocol, DNS. Here we have HTTP, files, whatever. Now, if you click, try to um, one of these queries, HTTP request, click on that. Okay, so once you click on HTTP queries, you see a command has been popped up and you can click on search. You see the all the HTTP queries made 
in this packet capture. As you can see, most of the HTTP queries here are made by this IP address. And these are the host names, the pages, and the method used, and of course, the destination port. All right, now you have, um, let's say, simple, uh, uh, just, all right, now you have a basic idea of how this thing works. Let's get now to the questions. So what is happening now? We are investigating uh, a PCAP file of an infected machine. Now the questions are provide the victim's IP address. What was the victim's IP address? Now given that the most occurring IP address in this packet capture, uh, I'm gonna have to read this, the machine is slow, I'm very disappointed. Uh, just trying to, okay, let's wait, disconnected, okay, this is not expected, so I'm going to have to split the view one more time, okay, we're back. All right, let's delete this. Click on search. And we're back to the main view. We see the main occurring IP address ends with 249. And given that we're investigating the network capture of an infected machine, we know that by default, of course, and given to us, we know that the IP address or most of the recent all of the requests are made by the infected machine, which means here we're looking at the victim IP address. So the victim IP address is this. Right click, copy that, back to try hack me. Submit. Now that is the victim IP address. Let's see what's next. The victim attempted to make HTTP connections to Two suspicious domains with the status 404 not found. Provide the host domains requested. The host or the domains. So we see here we have two. How many answers we have to? We have two answers, yes. All right, let's get back. Uh, nope, this is my machine uh, here. So we click on hey, HTTP request to display all of the HTTP requests made. Now looking at the victim IP address, we see these are all of the HTTP requests. We see the host, the domain names, and the pages. We're looking for 404 not found. So basically what we got to do here, we have to, if we, uh, let's modify on that. Add on pipe. 404. No data. All right, if we cancel this one and search by 404. Now, when searching for 404, we see two uh, results have been returned. We can look, we have the victim IP address making actually HTTP request to these two hosts. And upon making the request, the victim received, let's see here, status message not found and a status code for a poor so these are the requests we're looking for now this is the first domain we copy that comma the second one copy that submit and these are the correct answers next the victim made a successful hey http connection to one of the domains and received the response body length of 1309, uncompressed content size of the data transfer from the server. Provided domain and the destination IP address. So here we're looking to answer similarly, but we have to find a successful HTTP connection with this size. Don't forget this. So let's try first looking at the HTTP request one more time. And um, we see the pages, let's see the columns, uh, where, are, where are the columns? Okay, columns. So here, host, method URL. I'm gonna have to find out, put the headers. Let's see. 
Oh, so I was just want to see the length of this this traffic, but I think I'm gonna have to do this. All right. So what do we got here? Still, we didn't. Okay. So here we have more detailed view of the HTTP requests. Let's look at the length. So we have one successful, two, we have two successful um, HTTP requests. With this one has response body length 1309, which is the requested one in the question. So what is, so let's click on that and get back, grab the host name and answer with it. No? All right, the host name and the destination IP address. Copy the IP. Now we're talking. All right. How many unique DNS requests were made to cap.com, including the capitalized domain? So first, we have to find the number of DNS requests. Let's do that first. Unique DNS requests. Click on the query here, the most used ones. Double click on unique DNS queries. And here you will see all of the DNS queries, right? Now, we're looking to find out DNS queries made to cab, right? So, cab here, this is the domain, right? How many DNS queries made to cab.myfkn? We have one here, we have one here. The total is six plus one equal to seven. Next one, provide the URL of the domain, bh, etc. that the victim reached out over HTTP. All right, let's go to now to HTTP requests, modify on the query to include the detailed view of the HTTP requests, click on search. Now, this is a domain name, right? What's it required? It's required to find, provide the URL domain. All right, so let's copy the domain name, right? And then, Find the URL. As you can see, this is the URL from the field. We copy that. I guess we have to replace this with this one and answer with it. That's correct. Provide the IP address of the malicious server and the executable that the victim downloaded from the server. So this one, at the very beginning, seems kind of tricky, right? How do I find the malicious server? How do I know that? How do I know which one of these is the malicious server? And how to find the executable file? All right, let's look at the queries here. So we have a Windows Network Activity Connection File Activity here. This is interesting. Click on that. So let's look at the filter. File name not equal to null. Cut path. TX host. No record found with columns. All right, let's cancel this one and look at all the file names. No data. HTTP requests. All right, so if this is a malicious server, the IDS should have triggered an alert, right? So if you click on the alerts here by source and destination, we have one here. Double click on that. Look at the details. Network Trojan was detected. The source IP is here, decision IP. So this is the malicious server. Provide the IP address of the malicious server and the executable that the victim downloaded. If we take the malicious server here, IP address, right, and we use it in the search, let's see what we will get. So we have four requests, right, four detailed have, uh, details has have been re retrieved. And if we look at this, the first one, we see the HTTP request was made from the victim IP address to the malicious server over port 80 to retrieve a file called catzx.exe. So definitely this is the malicious file. Now let's take the IP address and answer with that. So what we actually did here, we just correlated the results from this view with the Suricata IDS um, results so submit and that was the correct answer so you may ask me how do we know that this is the malicious server and how do you know 
uh, this is the malicious uh, exe file actually if you get back to what i said we first filter the traffic based on the ids alerts ids alert has told us that there was a network trojan detected on the server and this is the ip address we filtered by the ip and we found the exe file the last one based on the information gathered from the second question provide the name of the malware using virus total all right so let's get back now to the machine here we see we have the http request right and we look here this is uh, where we found the executable file right and we submitted with the ip address but if you remember before arriving at this point the victim has visited this ip uh, domain and then this one now so before arriving at this point the victim visited this domain name and then actually visited this domain name so if we take a look at the first one copy that look at the community tab the ios cif was found in a paste bin with the title weekend emoted iocs and notes for for more information okay so it seems that this is the malware name let's go on the iosc was found also uh, it's the same right okay so you may you may say this is the answer and actually it is the answer but if you look again here we can search also with the second domain name let's copy that first this is your answer but you may be curious curious on why not to search with this domain so search with that and we've also some results you see the same answer emotet this is the type or the name of malware now if we go on with the requests we see here the third domain was a kind of wordpress site if we again take the value here back search here we have nothing it seems clean it got only two hits and one uh, partial you can go on and test the rest of the domains but eventually the file name is this one and the original malicious server which uh, which hosts this uh, file is this one that's why the answer was emotet okay then so in the next video we will go on with task 3 and task 4 i like to divide the tasks to make sure that you uh, grasp correctly and firmly the idea behind and the, pr the principles and the learning experience behind every task so that was for today see you in the next video